Everyone calls me Raph, because most people can't pronounce my first or last name, so Raph is fine. Um, I'm one of the coaches at Aura, and I also work and restore alongside Dr. Forster over there. Um, what we're going to talk about today is habit-based nutrition. So before I get started, I always like to kind of figure out what my crowd is. So out of this entire room, who has heard of the diet called keto? All right, intermittent fasting. Paleo. All right, so how many of you have done a diet in your life? So like everyone? How many of you have been successful at keeping it to this day? Yeah, so. My whole presentation is gonna be alongside habit-based nutrition because I personally feel it's one of the best ways to kind of see long-term success. And the fact that the Aura 90 is three months long, I think it's gonna work really well. So I'm gonna give you some kind of guidelines of where to go. So the nice thing about habits, it's automatic. You don't think about it. So something as similar as like you waking up to brush your teeth, it just happens. <laughs> oh yeah, so another <laughs> disclaimer is how I make presentations. I sit down and figure out memes and gifts that I want. <laughs> And then from there, I write stuff on the side. <laughs> so going back to brushing your teeth, it just happens. You don't think about it. So you can do the same thing for nutrition. So I also want you to kind of imagine, like, what if you didn't have to worry about, did I hit my macros? Did I eat enough calories? Like, how wonderful your life is going to feel if you're eating out like Brad Pitt every day, not worrying about the stress of eating. So how does it work? How I start with every single client is kind of a self-evaluation, because I think most people don't have the self-awareness to actually know where they're at in their nutrition journey. So an example of this is I had a client where he wanted to shed weight. He's like, I'm gonna go on a 1200 calorie diet. I wanna do this, this, and this, and I'm like, awesome. But wouldn't you think a better option is to start drinking one cup of water a day? Like this guy did not drink any water. So a lot of times people think they're way up here when really they're down here when it comes to skill level, right? So it's kind of like I give the analogy, like you want to finish a four-year degree, rather than doing your first year classes, you're going to go fourth year calculus and just hope for the best. And you end up failing. And then people are like, oh, I don't know what's going on. I eat pretty good. I think everyone says that, oh, I eat pretty good. But there's always ways to improve it. Um, so I'm gonna kind of cover the basics that I get everyone going, and I always start with protein. So a lot of times, <laughs> this one's good. I was losing my shit when I was. <laughs> um, for the most part, I think almost everyone under eats protein, right? Like, I've seen people's food journals, and it's like breakfast, oatmeal. I'm like, awesome, where's the protein? And they're like, oatmeal has protein? I'm like, yeah, but not enough. Um, so I took, the time to look into some research when it comes to uh, protein in your diet. So the one thing a lot of people hate about going on a diet is hunger. They always feel hungry because they cut down their calories. But if you do increase protein intake, it helps regulate your hormones so you don't feel hungry. So one of the things I tell people all the time to do is when you have your meal, eat your protein first because it's gonna start setting off all the hormones in your body to kind of fall in line. Our bodies like to be on a routine and schedule and not just like hope for the best. So if you increase your protein, it's gonna get you in the right direction when it comes to hormonal balance. Um, another study. So if you guys want these studies, because everyone reads research here like I do, let me know. Um, vegetables, like I cannot stress this enough. You want to eat a lot of vegetables. Like, your grandmother and your mom always would say, eat your vegetables. The reason why, yeah, you get your minerals, your vitamins, whatever, but if you look at calorie content in vegetables and say you decide to eat freaking a whole bowl of broccoli, you will maybe eat 150 calories, but because the food is so dense, you're gonna start feeling full. So now you've combined protein that's stimulating your hormones to feel full. Now you're eating, oh, hang on. Come back. Come on in. This is like the awkward moment where like when someone comes in late and everyone just like oh, <laughs> um, So with those two things, 
things, you're already kind of getting yourself into a deficit without tracking anything. Because again, like, with every client that I've done calorie tracking, after the two weeks of counting every single calorie, every client's like, fuck this, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> so you're kind of getting to the point already. Um, sleep. So sleep is huge. Yeah, right? Um, with sleep, this study was really, really, really cool. So they took a group of people made them on, went on to like kind of a weight loss, strength and conditioning program. One group had 5.5 hours of sleep and the other group had 8.5. When they looked at the results, had an increase of 60% when it came to fat loss, all from sleep. So when you look at how sleep works, again, we're going back to hormones. Our bodies like to stay in a cycle, kind of repetitive, kind of habit-based <laughs> approach. Like that. Um, so now you have protein helping with uh, your hormones. You have sleep helping with your hormones. And for women especially, hormones are huge. For guys, it's like sleep more, don't drink, and now you lost 10 pounds. <laughs> so for women, you kind of have to keep that in mind. Yeah, science. <laughs> um, from there, that's where I get into like carbs, fats, and supplements. So. When I get people doing these three things only, protein, more vegetables, and better sleep, you've probably already lost weight, you feel so much better, then that's where I start going into like, let's do like carb cycling, let's go into how much fat you need, let's go look at supplements. But a lot of times people skip these steps and then go right to there, because apparently keto is the best thing out there. So. All right, so. When people ask, like, well, how much, if you want specifics, the one thing I like to do is go along Precision Nutrition's whole idea of hand portions. The nice thing with hands, is you have them with you at all times, <laughs> right? And then when it goes a little bit more specifically, if you are like Tom, who's tall, he has a bigger palm and hand compared to someone's like, that's five foot. So it becomes a little bit more specific to you. So really simply, <laughs> The size of your palm is your protein portion. Your fist is a serving of vegetables, a little kind of cup thing is for your carbs, and one thumb of fat. Super easy to remember, and again, I can send you this if you want it for reference. So, really simple, for men, you have two palms, for women, one. And when they actually measured this out, when they actually took a little food scale that everyone loves using to tr figure out their macros every single day of their life, because we all have time to do that. Those were the averages, about 40 to 60 grams for men, 20 to 30 grams for women. Same thing for vegetables, two fistfuls, one fistful for women. Now we're going into carbs, same idea, two to one for men and women, same with thing with fats. And then if you look at the very bottom, Kind of hard to see. This is based on three to four meals. So when you average up the calories for a woman between three to four meals, 1,200 to 1,500 calories. So now if you're following all those three things that I had before, you'll end up in a calorie deficit without actually counting all your macros and calories every single day of this challenge. Like that's pretty amazing. All right, where are we going from here? So how do you actually take all these recommendations? You want to track them. So just like your daily planner, where you're like, wake up at whatever time, I have to be out the door at this time, and you know your checklist every single day, and then you can see it on paper or whatever you want to track it on, you come, become a little bit more accountable. So something like this on Google Sheets, this is what I do with clients. Habits on one side, so again, we went protein, veggies, and hours of sleep. Monday through Sunday, it's a simple yes or no. That's your tracking, that's all you have to remember. The more yeses means you're on the right track. The other cool thing is when you start tracking and you have those moments where you feel unmotivated, you're like, I'm not progressing, nothing's working, but then you go to your tracking sheet and you're like, holy shit, 90% of this week, I've been hitting all my markers. I'm on the right path. Yes. A lot of times when we start, we're kind of on this high, and then around week three, we're like, boom. Right, so we need to keep ourselves motivated, not with just with us, but also with the stuff that we're doing on a daily basis. All right, so what about calories, macros, detox, teas, and cleanses, and all that other crap? So, 
<laughs> nutrition <laughs> is one of those things where everyone has an opinion about it. Every single diet out there works. 100% it does. But the difference between following it is can you do it for the rest of your life? That's the question I always ask clients because I always get questions like, hey, I heard about this detox, heard about this diet, my friend does this and they saw a lot of success. I'm like, awesome, can you do it for the rest of your life? No. Right? So you have to find what works. Mm -hmm. Like, I make jokes about keto, but it's like if you'd rather have a higher fat diet, awesome. But next time measure how big one tablespoon of peanut butter is. You're gonna get really, really sad. <laughs> Um, and then don't let the marketing that's on Facebook and Instagram take you off your path to success. Because a lot of times, people start on the right foot, and then they see stuff like this, and then their whole perspective changes, even though they trust the process of eating more protein, eating more veggies, and sleeping. Like, it's hard work. Like, this is not easy, right? Like, I remember training a client, really, really successful entrepreneur, and he's like, I can't lose weight, I can't do it. It's like, it's been six months, nothing's working. I'm like, how long did it take you to build a multi-million dollar business? He's like, fuck, a long time. I'm like, it's the same thing, right? You have to put in the reps every single day to actually see the success. Like, one step at a time, because all those small changes add up over time. So yes, it is three, so we got another one. <laughs> Come on in. We do have three months together, but I want you to think beyond that. Like, don't give yourself just three months, give yourself four years. That's where true change is gonna happen. So imagine if you took all what you've learned today and throughout the challenge and continued for the next four years. Like, I don't tell clients that, hey, in eight weeks you're gonna drop 60 pounds, you're gonna change your life forever. I'm like, no, we're changing a lifestyle. Yeah. Right? And it takes so much more effort to do that because a lot of us, Went from being super athletic, say in college, high school, whatever it was, you get into the real world of working a desk job for 20 years, develop really shitty like eating habits and no exercise, and then you expect to undo all of that in three months. Right? So be realistic with yourself. Give yourself some grace. Don't be too hard on yourself because it takes time. Right? Like if you're having a tough time with something, like reach out to one of our coaches. Like we're here for you. Reach out to one of the other aura challengers, they're gonna help you. So just trust the process and you guys will do amazing. That's it for me. Yeah.